all I was saying was uh, we must don't really understand that God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom. See, the world will say you say thank you once you receive something, but from God you say thank you before you receive something. So if you need something from God, he is not going to show up until you thank him. And this praise team was singing and they were saying, Lord, so many doors you've opened. And I am just here to try to understand if he's opened that many doors. I don't understand why so many people are sitting on the doors that God has opened. They said he healed you. And I am a living witness what healing can do for you. And if he healed your body even from a cold, I don't understand why we're not giving him praise. But then I do understand why we're not giving him praise. Because we can only put out what we got in. So if we don't have that much in, we can't send that much out. And that's all right because no matter how much you got in, it's always room for more. So if you need something from God today, I just want to let you know that sometimes it's not that you're waiting on him. Sometimes he's waiting on you. So whenever you get a chance to just say thank you, whenever you get a chance to say, Lord, I love you, whenever you get a chance to say, Lord, you're so worthy, whenever you just remind yourself of all the doors he's opened and the ways he's made, you just say thank you and you just watch God show up. So many doors he's opened. So many ways he's made. Y'all not going to trick me because I'm not going to sing because I'm not no singer. All right? But I will worship. Thank you, Lord. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. So many times You've been better than good to me You've been better than good to me You've been better than good to me You've been better been better than good to me You've been so So good, Thank you, Lord. you've been so good to me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, progressive. Good morning. I give honor to God who is truly the head of my life. I give honor to the first family in their absence, to all of the ministers, Minister Page, Minister Terrell, Minister Hill, and to the other ministers in their absence. I give honor to my family, my husband, Mervyn, and the prince of my city, Cameron, and um, to all of the people who come to our Bible study on Wednesdays. They are my family and I love them. I give honor to all the people who have made their way out on today to hear a word from God. And I just pray that the Lord continues to rest in this place. Because if you don't feel the Lord, then something is wrong with you. Because he is right here in this place today. And we are just coming from Thanksgiving. And I know that I'm not finished being thankful because now we're in the gift-giving season. So we're going to continue to be thankful for that. But on this morning, I won't be before you long. But I am going to be coming out of the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter verse 11 through 16. And when you have it, let's say amen. Amen. 
And we're going to start at the 11th verse. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son. That we will be mature in the Lord. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, grow in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body. The church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other part grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Lord, we come before you today asking you to feed us with the bread of heaven. Father God, I ask that you meet every need for every person. I ask, Lord God, because you already know the need. Father God, I thank you and I declare in your name that every enemy's contracts are broken and he is not able to rest in this room, but he will be leaving at the sound of our praise. Father God, we just thank you and will be so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 May be seated. Thank you. As we look at this letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians while he was a prisoner in Rome, this letter was for the church, and it was about the church, and he was talking to us, the saints, the disciples, the Christians. I just call us church people. And when we pick up the verse here in chapter 4, at verse 11, he's telling the church about the gifts that he left to the church. Now, these gifts are different from the seven administrative gifts that God left the church, which are pointed out in Romans 12. And they are completely different from the nine power gifts that the Holy Spirit left the church, which is pointed out in 1 Corinthians 12. Here, Paul is giving us a clear and concise job description for the five ministering gifts. They are to build the body of Christ, and this is supposed to continue until we, the entire body, become mature in the Lord and measure up to the complete standard of Christ, which means God does have a standard. We act like we can do anything we want, but that's not God's standard. Now, this is the process for the saints. And now we need to find out the purpose for the process. The purpose for this process is found in the second part of the verses, 14 through 16. So when we put it all together, it would really go like this. Our process is to come together in our faith and knowledge so that we become mature in the Lord and measure up to the complete standard of Christ. Because our purpose is to no longer be immature like children. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way, and be more and more like Christ, who is the head of the church, his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other part grow. So that the whole body, can somebody say whole body? whole body? So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The problem for us is that we confuse our process with our purpose. So for the sake of the note takers, we're going to tag this text. Don't confuse the process with the purpose. So as we know, God is the master of processes. He, the definition of processes is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. And God is the master of that. Processes come 
when we need to put things in an order to make sure that they turn out the way that we intended for them to do. So when God decided to create the universe, he did not come out and just say universe. He had a process. The first day he created the day and night. The second day he created the sky. The third day he created the land, the seed, the plants, and the trees, and the vegetation. The fourth day he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. The fifth day he created the water, the sky, and the animals in the water. The sixth day he created the animals on the land, and man. This process was for the purpose of creating heaven and earth. Because behind every process, there is a purpose. So, because God is so infinite in his wisdom, he decided that so he would not have to do this process all over again, he put the seed of every fruit and herb and man inside of them so that they could reproduce their own. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, and when he went through the process of creating man, he did the same. The process. When creating us, he created our spirit first. Then he gave us a body and then he blew into us the breath of life and placed the seed inside the men so that they and we could produce after all our own kind. That's the process of men, because God is the master of processes. Even those in the Bible had processes. Now just stick with me now, we're just building a foundation. From David, his process took over 15 years from the time he was first anointed by Samuel. And it was another seven years before he was anointed and appointed king over all Israel. This means that David's entire process was over 20 years of his life with the purpose of being made a king. We should also look at Joseph, who had a dream that his brothers would be bowing down to him at the age of 17. And the dream did not manifest until he was 30, which means Joseph's process took 13 years for the purpose of him being used to save his family. Our process of becoming like Christ isn't finished when we receive him as our savior. It actually has just begun. We must then start walking out the purposes of our process. So if we think about the steps of life and we think about becoming mature in Christ, if we really broke it down, we could actually begin to see the two mirroring one another. All right, so from birth to three, in life we call those the infancy years. And during those years, we're learning to become acquainted with the new world outside of the womb. We're discovering and learning new things independently. And one of the biggest things we must learn to do is eat. But for the first six months to eight months some, we just eat milk. Then we move to solid food. And then to more solid food. Then we turn around and time pass and now we're two. And as we call those, the terrible twos. And those we distinctively learn to push the envelope and everything has only one place to go, and that's in our mouth. And so now we're beginning to say some things that no one really understands, except the people in our household, you know. And then we get to babbling, and our parents get so excited, and they start asking, did you hear that? And the world say, yeah, but they didn't really say nothing. Now the world don't say that to you, because you kind of excited. And at the same time, the D's are the first syllables that usually become very easy for babies to say. Da, 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 you know. But you better not tell Papa about that because they swear they say a name name first, right? So it kind of goes like this. Are you hungry? Da, da. You wet? Da, da. <laughs> you know, 
you, who broke my glasses? Dada. You know, that's just what they do. So now around three, you're developing your own personality. And you begin to speak more clearer. And now you're forming more words and you're no longer falling down when you're walking. Now you're actually running and you're very, 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 very busy. And you have now even decided that even at three, you want to know who you like and who you don't. If you don't believe me, just try to reach for a baby and hold them and they don't want to be bothered. They're going to say in no uncertain terms, not today. So somewhat us growing up spiritually and we receive Christ, we begin the same way to explore this new life. And we're still busy around three and we at church all the time and we had Sunday school and Bible study and everything's fine. And we had Friday night service and we no longer babbling. And now we quoting scriptures and it seems as if everything we pray, God opening the heavens and we getting whatever we want and whatever we pray about. And now even at three, we trying to tell everybody who saved. Yep, she saved. Yep, he saved. Nope, she ain't saved. Mm -hmm, that's what we do. Because we want everybody saved once we get saved. Right? And even at that time, we trying to decide who we going to deal with. Come on. Stay with me, y'all. We still just in the infants. Then from 4 to 10, we call those the children age. Yes, as children, our mouths get a little slicker. Our influence widens. Now we are in the comparing years because now we're in school and we're seeing other things to compare ourselves to and our lives and now instead of worrying about falling down like we did at two or three we begin to worry about fitting in and now we begin to take on some issues from the world outside of our home we see that everyone doesn't look the same and people don't love everything we do like our parents and we see that she lighter than me and he darker than me and we recognize our hair ain't the same color and the length ain't the same and we hear people calling us by different names and see all of that affects us in the children's age. Okay, and by those things we're depending on what's going on inside the home, this is where children either continue to open up or start shutting down. And guess what? We mirror in the church. So ain't nothing much more different on the church side either. So in our new life, we start growing up and developing, and now we begun to have our own opinions and our own influences, and we done met other saints, and now we ourselves are less concerned with falling down and more concerned with fitting in. We too in the kingdom of God, yep, in the church. We get to comparing and we recognize I don't dress like her and I don't speak like her and some folks speak to me and some people don't. And Oh, come on now, we recognize that. And depending on what's going on in the kingdom will depend on whether we open up and grow or whether we just start shutting down to God. I'm just saying. So now, between the ages of 11 and 18, we're adolescents. And these are the years where whatever we have been developing is about to be revealed to us and the world. And these are the years where if you are not careful, you will allow your mess ups to become your makeup. We will start wearing our mess ups and event identifying ourselves through the mistakes that we have made. These are the years where we develop masks. We begin to learn how to cover up our fears and cover up our shame and we experience heartaches and heartbreaks and we feel love from some friends and undercover haters and from the other friends and we develop our strengths and our weaknesses and all the time we still trying to discover who we really are. Well again, ain't much different from in the church. Because now in the process of adolescence in the church, it's not an easy process either. As a matter of fact, it's a little harder because this is the place where you are supposed to be loved because you're different. 
This is the church where you're supposed to be covered by grace and love and where your mess ups are supposed to be covered by the blood of Jesus. This is the place where you are supposed to call your prayer partner and they take it to Jesus and the two or three of you are gathered in his name, but you realize that not only did they take it to Jesus, they took it to the deacons and the mothers and come on now, we just talking about church. All right, all right. So this is the place that I'm supposed to be prayed for and not prayed on. Come on now, I know I'm not the only one that been grew up in a church. This, I'm just talking about the church. This is the place that said my gifts are welcome until you found out that my gift was yours and then there's no more room for my gift. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I'm not going to be up here long because I'm just going to tell it and we just going to sit down and go home. But I'm telling you about the church. And I'm telling you about growing up in the church. Because we always want people to come to church and we always say, oh, you are so welcome. And then they come for years and they ain't been the good years and then they leave and the Lord bless them and they come back and you still want to keep them in the chapter that you left them in. I'm just talking about the church. That's it. So now, we're still in the adolescence. And when we talk about adolescence, because this is youth day, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So when we talk about adolescence, adolescence we don't like because adolescents are real. See, we want to shut them up because they tell you what we just don't want to say. All right, I'm just checking. All right, so now that I am an adolescent and I see things through my own eyes, this is what I see church looks like. It looks hypocritical. It looks immoral. It looks blasphemous. It looks abusive. It looks deceptive. It looks selfish. It looks vindictive. It looks uncommitted. It looks disbelieving. It looks judgmental. It looks mean-spirited. It looks proud, manipulative, and cliquish. Now that's just from an adolescent. While all the time claiming to represent God. I'm just saying. So the truth is that somewhere between infancy and adolescence, we got stuck. And the years continued to pass, but we didn't continue to grow. And then what happens is we reach adulthood and we realize that we still reacting like children. So this is why we need to become equipped to do God's work. Frederick Douglass was right on to something when he said it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. But are we building people? Or are we breaking them? Right here in the church. Because when you build on the foundation of the truth of God's word, you may get bent over, but you will never become broke down. So the people you see finding new churches, they ain't broke, they just bent over. Because if they was broken, they wouldn't be in church at all. I'm just saying. Because it is funny how we like to say I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord until the army gets a little tight. But in the army, you get hurt. In the army, you get wounded. In the army, you get a lot of things. But it's the army of the Lord. All right. So the Bible is telling us that the five ministering gifts need to build them up in their faith and in their knowledge. Because faith is believing God to the fullness of your understanding. See, and this is where we get confused because a lot of people think that everybody got different measures. We don't have different measures of faith. We just have different levels of faith. And our level is based on the understanding of God's faith. 
So if your understanding of God is little, then your faith is going to be just that little. So we have to understand that I don't have more faith than you. I just understand his word different than you. So we have to understand that when we remember the process is to continue to be built up in our faith and knowledge of God's son, that is because we need to be mature in the Lord. So the church may not ever change. It may stay just as cliquish and critical and all of those things. But God right here is not allowing you to have an excuse for you not changing. Okay? So when we think about maturity and we think about how people respond when they're mature, we need to understand that the length of your time in church does not develop your maturity. Now, I'm not just saying that because I think that that's fun and that's going to get applause. If you don't believe me, just go to Hebrew 12, to Hebrew 5 and 12. Let's just go right there right fast. It says, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, you've been believers so long that you ought to be teaching others. That's what the Bible say. I, I didn't say that. Come on, go with me so you don't think that I'm just saying something. It says, you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things of God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. Now, if you got a King James Version, it says strong meat. All right. So that means that you've been in church a believer all your life and our deacon still got to get up here and tell you about giving that's milk because when you join church you know what the bible says about giving you know your time belong to him and your offering come on now I'm just saying. I didn't say it. The word said it. So you want to get mad at somebody? Get mad at the word. That's what it said. So if we really think about it, there's really only two kinds of believers. Just two. There is a milk level of believer and a meat level of believer. Let me help you determine who you are. Now, don't be trying to determine who nobody else is. Because we're going to mirror ourselves. All right? So, a milk level believer is driven by their emotions. Everything bothers you. They didn't call your name. They didn't sing your song. They didn't thank you for cooking everybody, teaching and preaching but me. That's a milk level. What you saying? Now a meat level believer is driven by faith. The promises of God are yes and amen. And I may not see it, but God said it. And if God be for me, who can be against me? And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned. And if you knew that scripture, you wouldn't care who was talking about you. Because if you belong to God, he going to get them right before you ever have to. See, we waste our time doing God's work. It don't matter what they say about you. But see, the problem is we only learn the first part of that scripture. We only know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. 
and we say that part, but we don't finish it and say, and every tongue that rise up against me in judgment shall be condemned. Because if you read the word, you know that I ain't got to chase you down for that lie you told me because God going to get you. I'm just saying. Just saying. Just saying. All right. Now, some of us are not walking in our purpose because we are stuck in the process. We got stuck somewhere between uncommitted and mean-spirited. It's just the process. Somewhere we got stuck between being lied on and being talked about, not realizing it's just the process. Somewhere we got stuck between passed over and walked by, but it's just the process. And the process may seem like it's much, but it's just to mature you. See, there are some things in this life, and I mean this Christian life, this life of God that cannot knock you over when it happens. Because you will become of no need for anybody. If every day we talk to you, there is a problem, you can't help nobody. So what God is saying is, I can't have you sit in my service all your life and still need a teacher. I can't have you being tossed and blown with every wind. Then the purpose of your life in Christ didn't change because God still expects you to become mature. Not older, but mature. Everybody want to be wise. Everybody want to know the word. Well, just become mature. Being mature means doing things you don't want to do. I mean being mature. Being a mother don't make you mature. Being a father does not make you mature. What makes you mature is when you learn the difference between going to church and being the church. That's what makes you mature. What makes you mature is understanding that, yep, this wasn't a place for me, but God, I know you got one somewhere. That's being mature. Being mature means I don't have to be a member, but man, if I got service to give, let me give my service. See, that's being mature. I'm just saying. See, because if we really look at Jesus as the example even on his way to the cross, he showed the difference between milk and meat. In the garden, his emotions took over and milk came out. He said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. That was milk. But then before he realized it, he opened his mouth right after and said, Up, oh, but not my will, thine will be done. See, that's meat. See, the problem with us deciding between whether it's milk and meat is because when our flesh feel good, we think that that's meat. And that's milk. Meat is when you pass and press past what you feel to do what God knows that you need to be doing. So when we consider the process of our lives, when we consider the mistakes we've made, the people we messed over, and come on now, because we've all done it. There are some friends that we know we wanted to have, but we ain't do them right. Hey, they didn't do it to us, but yeah, we worked it out in our mind that they did, but they didn't. But when we become mature, we just say, hey, I messed up. Next time I get one, I'll do a better. See, that's mature. Mature not still holding on to the fact that you did it to me. And I, you know what? I know you did it to me. Well, yeah, maybe they did. And then you turn around 10 years, you still holding it and ain't gone. That's not mature. See, God is at a place right now where he needs mature people. He needs people that are not on milk. He needs people that are mature. Because see, when the people come into the church, it is the church that greets the people. 
And if we don't greet people in love and we greet people in stank attitudes, that is not building God's kingdom. It's building your little kingdom, but not God's kingdom. So what we need to do is we need to allow people to come in, mess up, be who they are, and still love them through where they are. That's what the church is supposed to do. So as I close, I need for all of us to understand that the process of our lives was not a mistake. Even though we made mistakes, we are not the mistake. And as I always say so eloquently, if you are not with people who are building you up, then you need to go away. And if you are with people who continue to remind you of your past, maybe they need to be a part of it. The doors of the church are open. Now I'm going to say this. I know that we say the doors of the church are open every Sunday. But I'm going to say the kingdom doors are open. See, because there are some people who know that they have not been mature. They know that they do need to grow up. And it's okay. Because as long as we got breath in our bodies, we can say, hey, I need another chance. But these are not the doors to progressive that are open. These are the doors to the body of Christ that are open. These are the doors to say, yep, I'm a little childish. And I need to become just a little bit more mature. Not because I said it, but because the word said it. And if you've been doing this for years and you still need a teacher, then it's a problem. So, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, and you just want to start the process, we're not asking you to be healing people and speaking in tongues. We're just asking you to give your life to Christ. He's going to do the rest. But you got to do something first. See, faith without works is dead. So you just take the time to come to Christ. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell it. So you came. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. You sacrificed your life. I can be free. I can be free. I can be whole. I can be whole. I can tell everyone. You thought I, you thought I was worth saving. And now we're opening the doors of the church for anyone that wants to make Progressive Baptist Church their home. So you clean me up inside. And now we are opening up the altar for prayer. You thought I was Anyone that wants to come down for prayer and you sacrifice your life. Pray and so I can be free. Bring all your burdens to God. And I can tell everyone. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to the God who changed my life. And I will praise you. 
I'll worship you. Forever. I'll give you glory. Because I, am. because I am. Because I am whole. Because I am and whole. I will tell. Change my life, and I will praise you. I'll worship you. I'll give you glory. I'll give you honor because you deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. I'll praise you. I'll worship you. You're the King of Kings, and you're the Lord of Lords forever. Because, because I am free, because I am, I will tell, I will tell everyone You thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. Oh. You thought I was to die for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You thought I was to die for. And you sacrificed your life so I could be free. Amen. 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 I, I want to take this opportunity to, um, to let the people know who are down for prayer that um, God knows. And along with praying, we need to learn how to do that too. And so I'm just going to share something with you. When you're coming here for prayer and you go back and you don't think that anything has happened or God has not heard you, I need for you to understand that he always hears you. But being mature means that thank you for hearing me and help me to understand timing and give me the patience to wait. We don't have to keep asking God for the things because he knows what we need before we even need it. And he said that I will give you the desires of your heart. He said, if your earthly father give you good things, what much more will I do unto you? So we need to understand what we're doing when we are praying. So we're going to come to the altar of God and we are going to lay them down. That means when we go back, they shouldn't go back with us. Father God, we thank you and we come before you, Lord. Before we ask you anything, we just want to thank you for who you are. Father God, we want to thank you for our early rising this morning. And we want to thank you for giving us a bread from heaven, Father God. We want to thank you, Lord, because you do just what you do and you do it well. Father God, we thank you for all things, Father God, because you said that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the called according to your purpose. Father God, we come before you and you know what's on everyone's heart, Father God. Even the ones that did not come, Father God, we know that you know what's on their heart as well. Father God, we just thank you for being God and we give all of our burdens and our troubles and our problems to you, Father God, knowing that you do careth for us. 
And Father God, we are going to make this declaration as we leave this place, but not from your presence. We are going to stand on the word of God and be built up by the power of God. And we're going to say we thank you for creating us to be the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath, to be the lender and not the borrower. Father God, we just thank you for giving us all the things we need. We thank you for healing us, Father God. We thank you for delivering us, Father God. We thank you, Lord, because you are a way maker. You make a way out of no way. And what we love about you, God, is you have no respect to person. And if you did it for one, Father God, you can do it for others, Father God. Allow us to grow our knowledge and our understanding in you, Father God, so that we can take on the faith of you, Father God, and we can call things that are not as though they were. And we can start moving some mountains and healing some people and casting out some things, Father God. And Lord, we will be so careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.